The real superpower of great software engineers goes far beyond code. It's a mindset for dismantling complex problems across fields. Let me break it down. So the first one is the thing about confidence. When engineers hit something completely unfamiliar, there's this quiet yet firm belief. I'll figure it out. And look, this isn't some motivational poster nonsense. This confidence is earned. You earn it by getting thrown into chaos and coming out the other side. Again and again. Every engineer has had that moment. Day one on a new code base, you open it up, and it's a complete mess with hundreds of thousands, sometimes even millions of lines of legacy code. You feel tiny. Like, how is anyone supposed to understand all this? Or you get assigned a task you've never remotely done before. You don't even understand what it's asking for when you first read it. The whole domain is foreign. The tech stack, programming languages, the concepts, the terminology. You're sitting there and thinking, I have no idea where to even begin. But here's the thing, you did figure it out and deliver, eventually. And then it happened again with the next project, and the next one, and the next. Each time you survive that cycle, something shifts in your brain. Tasks that used to feel impossible, they become straightforward. Your baseline keeps rising, and you don't even notice it happening. This confidence isn't about knowing the answer or arrogance. It's about trusting the process. Get overwhelmed, dig in, figure it out, solve it. So when something new shows up, you don't panic. It's just something that will take time to figure out. But that process I just mentioned, how does it actually work? Well, let me ask you, what do you think is the most fundamental problem in computer science? Feel free to pause for a second and think. Is it problem solving? Complexity? Writing clean, efficient code? Is it translating requirements into a working system? Here's what John Ousterhout, author of A Philosophy of Software Design, says. The answer is problem decomposition. How to take a complex problem and divide it up into pieces that can be solved independently. That's it. When a well-experienced engineer faces complexity, decomposition is automatic reflex. Break it into pieces or steps whatever makes it manageable. Think about building a skyscraper. You don't build it as one giant piece. You decompose it. Foundation, structural frame, floors, utilities, facade. Each piece can be worked on independently by different teams. Similarly, in software, large systems get decomposed into modules, services, layers. And the primary mechanism that makes this possible is abstraction, the art of hiding complex reality behind a simple interface. It lets you work at one level without drowning in all layers below, and good boundaries make decomposition cleaner. Think about your home. You flip a switch, you get light. Turn a tap, you get water. You don't need to trace wires to the breaker panel or understand the plumbing system. All the complexity stays hidden behind the walls. Same thing in software. For example, you send a request and get a response. You don't need to know what's happening behind the scenes, whether it's querying databases, calling other services, or running complex algorithms. That's the power of abstraction. Now, this ability to decompose problems, it doesn't start as a reflex. You first learn it consciously, through principles like separation of concerns and minimizing dependencies, through studying design patterns and software architectures. But after years of practice, it becomes intuition, that instinct for knowing exactly where to cut a problem. And here Here's what makes this a true superpower. It's a universal framework for tackling complexity, far beyond coding. Designing a city, decompose it into zones, infrastructure, and services. Conquering a market, segment it into channels, products, and user cohorts. This framework scales. So you've decomposed the problem into pieces. What's next? Engineers have this strong bias. Start building. I mean, yes, they plan. They think it through first, write and review comprehensive design documents. But that initial plan is a starting point, not a final blueprint. In software, trying to design everything perfectly upfront often backfires, not because planning is bad, but because software projects evolve as you build them. Goals shift as stakeholders interact with a working system. What they said they wanted is often different from what they discover they need when they see a live prototype. Technical constraints can reveal themselves only during implementation. For example, a database schema that performed perfectly in isolation can choke under a specific join pattern with production-scale data. The emergent behavior of interacting components cannot be fully predicted through design alone. For instance, two services, each logically correct, can create a system-level failure like a distributed deadlock, when their asynchronous communication cycles align in an unexpected way. So the actual process is iterative by necessity, not just convenience. You build small working pieces, deploy them to real conditions, learn what the system actually needs, then you adjust, you tweak the code based on what you discovered. The architecture can evolve, because implementation generates insights planning never could. This isn't sloppy, it's strategic. 
Because software is fundamentally more malleable than most physical systems, refactoring code is easier than restructuring a bridge. This flexibility makes iteration not just viable, but often the most effective strategy. Now here's what makes these three powers so effective. They reinforce each other. Decomposition lets you take incremental action. Those small wins build confidence. That confidence lets you tackle even bigger, more complex problems. It's a self-reinforcing loop. Each turn makes the next one easier, and it works almost anywhere complexity exists. Now we have momentum, but what happens when things inevitably go wrong? The last one might be the most counterintuitive, how great software engineers transform their relationship with failure. This isn't just about fixing bugs and service outages. It's a complete mindset evolution across four levels. Level 0, Paralysis. This is where everyone starts. Errors appear, then more errors, then cascading errors. You get so overwhelmed, you freeze. You don't even know where to begin. Level 1, The Firefighter. With some experience, you learn to react. You stare at walls of error logs trying to parse what's actually relevant, copy-paste cryptic messages into Google, try every Stack Overflow answer you find, change something, run it again, see if it works, no, we'll try something else. You're moving now, but it's reactive trial and error. At this stage, error means a fire I need to put out right now. Level 2. The Detective. Errors stop being emergencies and start being clues. You form hypotheses, test them systematically, follow the evidence. Now an error means the system is telling me something specific. Debugging becomes methodical, not desperate. Level 3. The Architect. This is where the fundamental shift happens. You realize in complex systems, errors aren't exceptions. They are almost inevitable, so you stop waiting for them to happen. You know things will break somewhere, so you design for it, building in monitoring to detect issues before users do, designing for graceful degradation so partial failures don't cascade, asking not just how do I fix this bug, but what systemic issue enables this class of bugs. Now errors become expected conditions you've already accounted for, from paralysis to reaction to investigation investigation to proactive design. Errors stop being emotional triggers and start becoming pure information. This creates mental stability. You're prepared, not surprised. This mindset works in other complex domains designed for resilience, not just prevention. So there you have it, for mental powers from years of engineering. Now I'm curious, what's your superpower? What skill from your field translates everywhere? Drop it in the comments. I'd love to know.